the basic concepts and clinical correlates related with the epilepsy and the first concept which you need to understand epilepsy is that you must know the difference between seizure and epilepsy. Very first thing, because many people think seizure and epilepsy is one and the same thing. Rather, first of all, you should know what is seizure. Then you should differentiate epilepsy and seizure from each other, right? So first of all, we'll define what is seizure. What are the spellings of seizure? S E I Z U R E. Okay, so this is Caesar, and we have to see what are the similarities or differences with epilepsy. Every Caesar is not epilepsy. The first thing which you have to remember is every Caesar is not epilepsy. Today, my main uh, stress will be how to how not to over diagnose epilepsy. You should have such a crispy, clear concept about epilepsy that you should not under diagnose and you should not over diagnose. Because if you under diagnose a patient of epilepsy, it means the patient has epilepsy, you fail diagnosis, patient suffers a lot. But if you over diagnose epilepsy, still patient suffers a loss. Over, over diagnosis means a person who does not have epilepsy, he has some other neurological phenomenon or psychological phenomenon, and you misdiagnose uh, diagnose it as epilepsy, it means you are stigmatizing the patient socially because unfortunately society Unfortunately, still in modern era of medical sciences, we discriminate uh, against the patient with epilepsy, unfortunately. Number two, when you overdiagnose epilepsy, you may, you may be committing a patient wrongly to many years of drugs which may even produce toxicities. Because if you overdiagnose sore throat, you may give antibiotic for five days, no problem. But if you overdiagnose epilepsy, you may be giving drugs for a wrong diagnosis for three, four, five years or so. Is that right? So that today in our first session, our main stress is that we should know precisely, exactly what is epilepsy, what is seizure, and how to under or over diagnose, avoid the under or over diagnosis of epilepsy. So let's first of all concentrate on seizure. Yeah, who will define seizure for me? Okay, there's one person here. What is seizure? It's not, not a name of a king. Uh, she is saying, Caesar is persistent discharge of neurons. What do you think? Your inspiratory centers are firing? Are you awake right now? Sure? Your reticular system is persistently firing? Is it epilepsy? No. Just a minute. First thing, it's a wrong definition that she is saying that persistent discharge of neurons is epilepsy. There are so many neurons in our body which are persistently discharging and they are not epilepsy. Vasomotor centers are all the time firing. You know, a sympathetic tone is all the time maintaining the vessels in semi-constricted position. We don't say there is epilepsy of vascular system. Is that right? So just persistent, thank God there is persistent uh, electrical activity in our brain which keeps us alive. Right? So that is not epilepsy. Uh, what is epilepsy? Yes, please. Or seizure, first seizure. Okay, she said it is excessive discharge. Again, sometimes in seizure there may be excessive discharge or sometimes it may be less than excessive, less than normal even. It's not necessarily, even though most of the seizures and most of the epilepsies have excessive discharge, but all of them do not. Yeah, what is seizure? A uh, question goes to someone who looks very intelligent. Yes, young man from there. You look intelligent. Yeah. What is epilepsy or what is seizure and what is the difference? I think you are trying to confuse me, isn't it? And I'm sure you are failing in your effort. Right, I will not comment even your answer. He is saying, it's a very intelligent answer which can confuse even anyone. He is saying this is inhibition of, I don't know, excessive inhibition of inhibitory neurons. <laughs> right, so <laughs> it is just like he say excessive use of the brakes. Anyone else? Someone who is really confident, uh, who knows what is Caesar. Mm, okay, yes, what is Caesar? Okay, now she started, takeoff was very right and then she suddenly banged. She says, 
in her definition that it is abnormal discharge in the central nervous system. This is right. In seizure or in the epilepsy, there can be abnormal electrical activity in the brain. But remember, every abnormal activity in the brain is not producing seizure. Every abnormal electrical activity in the brain is not producing epilepsy. But of course, in seizure and epilepsy, there is some abnormal electrical activity in the brain. Up to now, she is right. Then she said, which may result into what? Motor? Abnormal motor experiences. This is a very big confusion. Such a big confusion. Because more, I don't know, not only medical students, somehow even some doctors, they believe every seizure is going to be some abnormal motor experiences. This is absolutely wrong. Actually, some of the seizures may be abnormal motor experiences, some may be abnormal sensory experiences, some may be abnormal psychomotor experiences. Let me tell you what is seizure. You, you are still holding, yes. Okay, then <laughs> okay, okay. I will tell you that uh, my own definition. I hope many people in the world may agree with me, right? So then you see what you have missed in your definition. Uh, it's very sad. None of us is clear about Caesar and epilepsy, uh, right? Let's start. Write it down. What is Caesar? Caesar is when there is abnormal electrical activity in the brain or central nervous system resulting in, this is very important, resulting in abnormal, resulting in abnormal motor, sensory or psychomotor experiences called seizures, called seizures. Look. To call a clinical event seizure is, first condition is there should be abnormal electrical activity in the brain. Electrical activity in central nervous system. There should be some abnormal electrical activity. But remember, every abnormal activity is not seizure and, or epilepsy. Many times, every day, some, some of us may get some abnormal electrical activity in the brain, but we are not diagnosed as epileptic patients or we are not diagnosed as suffering with seizure. It's not enough that just abnormal activity will be seizure. Rather, there should be an abnormal electrical activity in the brain which should lead to some abnormal experiences to the patient. We should lead to some abnormal experiences in the patient because many times abnormal electrical activity occur in the central nervous system. Abnormal electrical activity occur in the central nervous system but you may not be aware of that. Can we call it seizure or epilepsy? No. So abnormal activity should be followed by, yes, abnormal, yeah, motor experiences, motor experiences, yeah, abnormal, sensory experiences or abnormal, yeah, psychomotor experiences, psychomotor experiences. This is very important. If any one of you develops some abnormal activity in your central nervous system and due to that abnormal electrical activity, you pass through an experience in which there is some abnormal motor experience or abnormal sensory experience or abnormal psychomotor experience, then we call this, yes, we call it seizure. <coughs> when I don't know spelling right like that, don't worry, right? That is called seizure. For today onward, what is seizure? Some abnormal motor activities or sensory experiences or psychomotor experiences which occur due to abnormal electrical activity in the central nervous system. But every seizure is not epilepsy. Remember, most brains will develop seizures under abnormal conditions. Probably almost all of us, we will develop severe hypoglycemia or almost all of us develop severe electrolyte disturbances or almost all of us take some toxic dose of CNS stimulant, we may develop abnormal electrical activity in the central nervous system and that may manifest as abnormal 
motor or sensory or psychomotor experiences and we may suffer with seizure but we won't say we are epileptic patients or should we be called if she, for example to this lady you inject a very heavy dose of insulin she goes into hypoglycemia and a severe form of hypoglycemia there will be abnormal electrical activity in the central nervous system and that abnormal activity of central nervous system may lead to some abnormal motor or sensory or psychomotor experiences she will be suffering with seizure right but next time in her life she don't give such a heavy dose of insulin she won't have the seizure so do you think she should be diagnosed as epileptic patient and then treat her with, uh, with the, so many years with anti epileptic drugs answer is no is that right so first thing which you have to remember that almost every brain can develop seizure under some pathological circumstances and every seizure is not epilepsy right i will go into detail of little bit seizure and then i will compare a single seizure with epilepsy abnormal motor experiences for example in my central nervous system if precentral gyrus which is having motor cortex it is abnormally firing if it is abnormally firing for example on the left side maybe my this arm is abnormally moving right this may be a motor seizure or in post central gyrus if there is abnormal electrical activity in my sensory cortex when sensory cortex has abnormal electrical discharges patient may perceive as there is some abnormal sensation in the arm right for example you may come across a patient who says that when he sees flashes of light his arm start burning now this is something which you don't diagnose because we don't understand what is seizure what happens maybe some flickering of light stimulates some abnormal activity in the brain and if it stimulates abnormal electrical activity in the sensory cortex somatic sensory cortex what will happen that sensory cortex area which is connected with the which part of the body that part of the body will show abnormal sensory experience for example you may feel your arm is on fire or you may feel there is abnormal unpleasant tingling sensation or you may find that your arm is under extreme pressure but actually there is nothing pressing it it is quite possible that when someone really presses your arm action potentials pass through this and stimulate a particular part of sensory cerebral cortex and if that cerebral cortex is irritated by abnormal electrical activity within the central nervous system there may not no pressure over here but patient perceives that so that will be a abnormal sensory experience let me tell you one thing you know temporal lobe in the temporal lobe there is area which receives the taste and which receives the sensations of olfaction right now if your temporal lobe abnormally fires especially in that focus of the temporal lobe which is receiving the taste what will happen you are just sitting here in the lecture and you start smelling something which is not there it may well be a seizure it may be a seizure because some area in the temporal lobe is irritated and that area is primarily receiving certain connections with the olfactory system and when that is undergoing abnormal electrical activity patient may may feel as if he is smelling something which is not there if you are very lucky suppose this lady what happens in her central nervous system she has nothing in her mouth to eat but the gustatory area taste area is irritated and she feels there are lot of sweets in her mouth because when she puts the sweets in her mouth a particular area is receiving the action potential but if that area develop due to some reason automatic firing right she will perceives as she is having lot of sweets or chocolates in her mouth but actually there is no chocolate again this may be an epilepsy or it may be seizure is that right so seizure may be abnormal motor experience when motor cord cerebral cortex is involved or it may be an abnormal sensory experience when some sensory cortex is involved for example again if your occipital cortex you know visual cortex if visual cortex is having abnormal electrical activity you may have abnormal visual experience is that right abnormal visual sensory experiences this may be a seizure right again let me tell you very interesting thing let's suppose this is your cerebral cortex now you know this is primary visual area 
then here it is secondary visual area and then there is yes tertiary visual area in primary visual area you receive the yes please you receive the information visual information in secondary visual area or area 18 area 17 is the primary visual area area 18 is the secondary visual area area 19 is tertiary visual area now most of the author call area 18 and 19 combined as visual associated area so primary visual area and visual associated area work in a different way for example here you receive the yeah information here you analyze the visual information and here you recognize the visual information you see the thing here you see what is the color what are the angles what are the features of the object you decided here and you recognize it over here let's suppose I write here something I've written here you could see it here then by this uh, angles and contours and all these colors and other things you could analyze it and here you see it is something like you have read uh, maybe read somewhere it is something like horse but if I write something like what is this can you recognize it are you sure you cannot recognize it but can you see it can you analyze it yeah you can tell what is the color what are the angles but you cannot recognize it means this image go to area 17 area 18 it goes for reception it goes for analysis but it failed to be recognized am I clear now once you have learned this basic thing let's develop the relationship of this thing with the Caesar if you have a normal electrical focus here you have a normal electrical focus here you will experience abnormal visual experience and what is that just flashes of light just flashes of light but if you have a normal focus over here you may find flashes of light with certain details for example fortification of light or jazz light or irregular lights or beautifully angled lights but if you have electrical focus here you may see due to Caesar some well elaborate visual sceneries what I'm trying to say again when primary sensory area is stimulated <coughs> epilepsy or Caesar's manifestations are different right when you stimulate this area you just find unformed what flashes of light if Caesar center is here right you will find some visual images which you can analyze but cannot recognize well and here you find well formed images now another thing you know this is sensory cortex here primary sensory cortex if there is a electrical abnormal electrical activity here you may find there is some pain or there is some temperature or there is some touch sensation but you are not sure what is touching and who is touching but if you go little behind this is analysis area and recognition area for example if someone touch you you receive the touch here yes you analyze the touch degree of touch coarseness of refinement of the touch here and you may recognize what is the cause of touch maybe this is an animal touching you or this may be a baby touching you or it may be a, some stick touching you can you differentiate or not now imagine rather than this experience you have abnormal electrical activity here if you have a normal electrical activity here you may be feeling someone is stretching something is stretching but you don't know what it is but if abnormal electrical activity is limited here you find the stretch and you can analyze the different features of touch but if there is abnormal electrical activity here you will even recognize the pattern of touch same is true about others so what happens that what really today I want to put in your mind every scissor is not motor every scissor is not motor for example motor occur when there is problem in this area of course it's too easy to understand this is prefrontal cortex which is concerned with uh, precentral gyrus which is concerned with motor now you know it that if this area is concerned with the leg if this is having epileptiform focus or seizure focus you will have normal movements in the leg but if you have here maybe normal movement in the arm and if you have abnormal electrical activity here you know this area of the homunculus motor homunculus correspond to the facial area you may have abnormal facial movements am I clear so what I really want to put in your mind that what is seizure 
Seizure is a normal electrical activity in some part of the central nervous system. It may be in some part or whole of the central nervous system. And it may end up into some abnormal motor experiences or it may end up into some abnormal sensory experiences or it may end up into some abnormal psychomotor experiences. Let me tell you what are different types of abnormal motor experiences than abnormal sensory experiences than abnormal psychomotor experiences. All of them are seizure. Okay, you want to go ahead in detail of seizure or first you want to know the difference in seizure and epilepsy? Yeah. You want to study first seizure in detail or you want to know real difference first between epilepsy and seizure? You want to know the difference? Okay, this very simple difference. When a person has a intermittent recurrent tendency to develop seizure, we say he is having epilepsy. When someone has a tendency to develop seizure again and again, we say he is suffering with epilepsy. That's so simple. When someone, so if someone has to define epilepsy in full, what is epilepsy? Epilepsy is abnormal, spontaneous, recurrent, abnormal activity in the central nervous system. This is abnormal, spontaneous, usually it may be triggered, but anyway. Abnormal, spontaneous, recurrent, recurrent, underline the recurrent tendency, recurrent tendency, tendency to develop the problem again and again. It is abnormal, spontaneous, recurrent, abnormal activity in the central nervous system, which may clinically manifest as, which may clinically manifest as, yes, abnormal, motor, sensory or psychomotor experiences, which may manifest as abnormal, motor, sensory or psychomotor experiences. So this is epilepsy. Experience is called seizures. So for today onward, if someone asks you what is the difference in seizure and epilepsy, you say if there is single, right? What is there? There is a single episode of seizure, right? This is not epilepsy. But if someone has a tendency to develop again and again seizure, then it is epilepsy. As I told you, most of us under abnormal circumstances will develop seizures. But all of us are not epileptic patients because we do not have a tendency generally to develop seizure again and again. Am I clear? We'll talk about epilepsy in detail later. But you understand, you cannot understand epilepsy without having a clear concept about seizure. What is epilepsy? Simply seizures again and again. Is that right? No. Yeah? I'm going to that. Right? I'm going into detail. I will come here and let you know, right? First, let's go to different motor experiences. Okay. In the motor cerebral cortex, you know, in the motor cerebral cortex, there are neurons which stimulate agonist. There are neurons which stimulate antagonist. Now, if you develop some motor type of epilepsy or for example, uh, we just, uh, for example, we take these ladies if they don't mind, suppose these are all suffering with the motor ex abnormal experiences due to epilepsy or seizure. Okay, epilepsy, now we go. Now, one, pr one patient may have the problem only that whenever she develops the abnormal electrical activity in her motor cortex, her all body stiffens. Right, it means agonist and antagonist simultaneously over fire. Agonist and antagonist simultaneously over fire and her all the body become stiffened. Even her body may be so much stiffened, the respiratory muscle may not move and that may end up into cyanotic condition. So if your all body becomes stiffened, this condition is called tonic epilepsy. What is this? Tonic. Right, in some patients, agonist and antagonist muscle fire simultaneously and when agonist and antagonist fire simultaneously, all the body stiffens and we say this is which experience? Oh, no. Tonic experience. Opposite to that, in some patients, what happens? First agonist fire, then antagonist. So agonist and antagonist alternatively fire. 
So what will happen? Contract. So limbs will basically jerk because first flexors fire, then extensors fire. It means the firing is abnormal and alternative fashion. You know, epilepsy has not read the books. So it does not go with rules and regulations. This disease is in some patients agonist and antagonist all of the flexors and extensors simultaneously fire. This is tonic situation, but if they alternatively fire, this is clonic situation. So epilepsy may be or seizure may be tonic or seizure may be motor seizure may be clonic. Motor seizure may be tonic or motor seizure may be clonic. In some patients, what happen? First, agonist and antagonist simultaneously fire, then they alternatively fire. So clinically, first patient stiffens and then body jerk. What is this? Tonic clonic. Excellent. You are yourself educated. People have friends like that. Tonic clonic seizure. Now you should be able to differentiate this way. Tonic body stiffens. Write it down in front of it. Body stiffens. Tonic clonic body jerks. Tonic clonic. First body stiffens and then jerk. Is it difficult to understand? It's too easy, isn't it? It's pathologically easy, I feel. Some people, sudden electrical activity in the motor area suddenly goes pathologically down. And they lose all the tone and they've just become a lump of meat. Yeah, atonic. Atonic. What is it? Atonic. Can you differentiate it now? If a person stiffens, what is that? And if patient jerks? And if some patient has a history, first it stiffens and then jerk. And if some patient just loses the tone and become lump like that, a tonic. And then person standing like this, suddenly a limp jerk. For example, he is having in his hand some plate and it goes like a flying saucer. Right? Or I am just standing like this and I am comfortable very, suddenly it goes like that. What is that? And I cannot control, I didn't do it uh, deliberately. Now, if it develops recurrent tendency like this, what is that? Myoclonic. We call it myoclonic. So please don't confuse myoclonic with others because management of myoclonic is different than all others. Drug of choices, difference. Thank you. Okay, now you have to tell me if a patient stiffens, what is that? These are all abnormal motor experiences. If patient stiffens, what is that? Tonic. If patient jerk, if first stiffens and then jerk, tonic clonic, and if patient simply loses all the tone, a tonic, and suddenly some part of the body jerk, myoclonic. Is that right? Am I clear? Now, please don't confuse clonic with myoclonic. In myoclonic, there is a single jerk. In clonic, there are repeated jerks. This is the basic difference. Again, if my arm becomes like stiff, this is what? Tonic. And if move like this, what is it? Clonic. And if first stiffens and then moves like this and it becomes limp and if suddenly it goes like that out of control, myoclonic. Is that right? So these are some examples then in which there can be abnormal motor experiences. Yes, please. Yeah, it, it should be differentiated from chorea. Okay, there are some very young bright doctor has asked a very interesting question. He says, how would you differentiate myoclonic epilepsy from the chorea? It's too easy. It's extremely easy. Don't tell me that there are differences in spellings. There's also other differences. You know, it is epilepsy. Is it continuous or only sometime? It may be only one, <laughs> right? Or it may be once uh, in a day or once in a week. But chorea is all the time going on. Is that right? So do you think a good doctor should confuse chorea with the myoclonic? Myoclonic is just like this. And chorea is? How many types of chorea you know? Huntington's chorea and St. Sedenham's chorea. How do you differentiate them? Single point to differentiate. I bring 1,000 patients with Huntington's and 1,000 patients with Sedenham's chorea. Just look at the patient and tell, is it Huntington's or? Okay, Dr. Saab, you tell me. You are the senior most among them. How do you differentiate Sedenham's chorea and Huntington's chorea? So simple. It's so simple. In, mo yeah, in most of the cases, St. Vitus dance, which is rheumatic, rheumatic chorea is less than 30 years and Huntington's chorea is 
more than 30 years. Simple. It's very rare to find Huntington Korea before 30 years of age. There are rare examples and it's very rare to find rheumatic chorea after 30 years. So just look at kids having chorea most probably rheumatic and senior patients having chorea most probably Huntington's. Is that right? But we will not go into detail of chorea because then we will start talking about athetosis and myoclonus. There are so many things. Let's come back to our discussion. Right, you know about the abnormal motor experiences, right? Now let's come to some unfortunate, again start with the epilepsy patient. This was the patient with tonic. This was the patient with colonic. This was patient tonic clonic. This was patient yeah, atonic. This was myoclonic, right? Now we come with abnormal sensory experiences. In abnormal sensory experiences, fine. There are three types of ab abnormal sensory experiences. Yes, please. There can be somatic sense, abnormal sensory experiences. Yeah. There can be, okay. There can be special senses. Right. And there can be visceral. Yes, very good. Visceral. For example, if you feel your arm is on fire intermittently, sometimes. It may be abnormal focus, electrically firing in your sensory cortex. Or if you have visual, abnormal visual experiences due to abnormal electrical activity in the visual area, it is again sensory epilepsy. Is that right? If you have, some people have, yeah, some people have abnormal electrical firing in that part of the brain which is stimulated when you develop cramps. Anyone can tell me when you develop abdominal cramps, which part of the central nervous system is firing at that time? You know, of course, sensory pathways will go, uh, autonomic, fib autonomic fibers have sensory also, right? So sensory fibers from the viscera, if you have, suppose, diarrhea or spasticity in the GIT, what happens? That from here, sensations will travel through sympathetic and parasympathetic pathway, go to the central nervous system, then the sensations will go up. Visceral sensations go up eventually through the thalamus, they go to sensory cortex. Which cortex? I'm about to be impressed by someone that which part of the cerebral cortex receives the sensation from the, yeah. No one knows the nausea, vomiting, you know nausea, you, are you, are you aware of nausea or not? Chemo trigger zone. Now look at it. How you can be all of you wrong? Chemo trigger zone is present in medulla, am I right? Yes. It's still there, isn't it? If it is still in medulla, then be sure that, can, that cannot be seat of consciousness. You know, you, you develop nausea. It means you develop the awareness of the nausea. Remember, the seat of awareness, write it down, seat of awareness or consciousness in the central of our system is cerebral cortex. The major seat of awareness in Cerebral cortex. Of course, when you irritate the chemo trigger zone, you develop nausea. If you uh, stimulate the vestibular area, nuclei, again you develop nausea. If you irritate GIT, again you develop a viscera, you develop nausea. But all of these places which are stimulated, they send ascending pathways which stimulate a part of cortex. When that part of the cerebral cortex is stimulated, then you develop the conscious sense of nausea. Okay. So nausea centers in the cerebral cortex where they are. You are doctors, am I right? Doctors are here, daily your patients develop nausea. You must be knowing which are the area in the central nervous system which feelings of the nausea go. As you know, touch will go to the postcentral gyrus. You are still knowing it. Visual information will go to occipital. Auditory information will go to temporal. Mashallah, you know so many things. Anyone knows where the nausea feelings go, where abdominal cramps go? Somewhere in temporal, okay, let me tell you one thing. These are very secret sensations, right? So uh, God kept them secretly in the central nervous system. Now look. You see, if you remove, take this temporal gyrus downward and take this upward, right? What really happens? I've opened up this area upward and this area downward. When you open it up, 
you have opened the stem of the lateral sulcus. You know, this is the superior surface of temporal and this is inferior surface of frontal and this is inferior surface of parietal. You know, there is frontal here, parietal here, occipital here, still temporal here. You know, things like that. When we open up, here there is a heap of cortex buried under all these areas. This was the most primitive cortex. Around it, the modern cortex developed. So it is buried within. This is called insula. Most of the visceral sensations go to insula. And if insula abnormally fire, if center of epilepsy is insula, what will happen? What type of feelings you will develop? You may develop repeated nausea. You may develop abdominal cramps. So sometimes abdominal cramps may be an epileptic form event. Of course, not very commonly, but it is possible. So what I really want to tell you that uh, Caesar may be ab due to abnormal electrical activity in the central nervous system, which may clinically manifest as abnormal motor experience, or it may clinically manifest as abnormal sensory experience. In I don't know why in our country we love to over diagnose the motor epilepsy and we love to under diagnose sensory epilepsy because we don't have concept that abnormal sensation may be due to epileptic form focus in the central nervous system, right? And of course, then there is psychomotor experiences. Now, there are some centers, it is especially temporal lobe epilepsy. You know, temporal lobe is intimately related with limbic function and psychological functions, right? And other primitive functions. You know, primitive functions are olfaction. It's a very primitive function. Olfaction, very primitive function, taste. Very primitive function, yes. VN is not primitive. VN is very advanced. Amoeba can smell. Amoeba can chemically taste the things because if you give a chemical substance, it moves forward or backward. But can amoeba see? The primitive sensations are in temporal lobe. Temporal lobe has some many functions, but right now I'll highlight just few functions. Number one, it's receiving taste sensation. Number two, it is receiving olfaction. Number three, temporal lobe is concerned with your emotions. Number four, it is concerned with your, along with the limbic system, it is concerned with your sexual behavior. I think previously somewhere in lecture I told you that temporal lobe is intimately related with the limbic system or emotional cortex. And limbic system, what is the major function of limbic system? Yeah, who knows that? What is the major function of limbic system? Question goes to madam, yes please. Limbic system you use to move around. These are limbs, but there's some limbic system in central nervous system. Yeah, a limbic system, which is an intimate relationship with the temporal cortex as well as in the hypothalamus, limbic system is mainly concerned with recent memory, concerned with primitive sensations like smell, smell guess, uh, taste, and limbic system is concerned with sexual activities, right? And it is concerned with especially uh, emotional behavior, memory, emotional behavior. Just write down one sentence. That limbic system, especially in, in association with temporal lobe, in association with temporal lobe, is concerned with species survival and perpetuation. Species survival and perpetuation. You want to smell, you want to eat, you want to taste. It is species. Survival, and if you are thinking of all the time other gender, this is species perpetuation. One boy is looking at me that how I know his feelings. It, everyone is like that. Most of the people are look, uh, thinking of other gender and it is not your fault. It is hardwired within our neuronal circuits that as soon as we become somewhat fit, mentally, physically or sometimes financially, we are looking for, okay? So, this is a limbic system which is concerned with the species, survival and perpetuation, right? Now, we are going to the epilepsy of limbic system and which mainly the epilepsy of temporal lobe, right? Of course, limbic system, okay, temporal lobe has one more very extremely important function. Temporal lobe has extremely important function. Do you differentiate between fantasy and reality? You know, you have very odd type of fantasies, but you know these are fantasies, these are not realities. Are you aware of this fact? Or you confuse the fantasies and reality? 
Do you think normal people confuse fantasy and reality? Yes, small children. They are normal. You know, for children, fantasy and reality is the same thing. That is why, why small children are so much fond of stories, little stories that you are not. Because small children, when you tell them stories, they fantasize. And when they fantasize, they believe this is true. And next morning, they cannot differentiate between the real story and the real event. In early life, we cannot differentiate between fantasy and reality. But as you grow up, you start learning what is the difference between fantasy and reality. For example, talk about this young man. He is in his bedroom fantasizing a big thing. Suddenly, his mother opens the door unexpectedly. Do you think he will continue his fantasy or he will stop and come to the reality and tell the mama, I'm shivering because I'm having high grade fever? And she touches and she says, there's no fever. Is that right? So adult people can differentiate very clearly between the fantasy and reality. This function is done by a temporal lobe. This is a function of, thank God there is an area in your brain which can tell what is your fantasy and what is your reality. This function is done by temporal, temporal lobe. Then temporal lobe has one more function. It develops a sense of familiarity and sense of reality. Sense of familiarity means what? The things which you have repeatedly seen, when you come across them again, they look familiar to you. Even though boys have a syndrome, in which they develop over familiarity, but usually, for example, if you have been seeing your father repeatedly, if suddenly your father enters in this room, you will develop a feeling which is, that you are looking at a human face which is familiar to you. Or if someone enters which you have never seen, you will develop another feeling that still there is another human face but unfamiliar to you. So this function, the differentiation of new recent or present or current sensory experiences, how to differentiate, compare and contrast with the pre previous experiences and determines it, is it familiar or non-familiar, this is a function of temporal lobe. Right? Once you know these things, now let's talk about the epilepsy of temporal lobe. Temporal lobe are having which functions? It has psychological, psychological very important functions, right? Visceral important functions and sexual functions. Now, if someone develop epilepsy of temporal lobe, what kind of clinical features that, that person will develop? It depends on that which area of the temporal lobe is irritated. As I told you, if in a person that area in the temporal lobe is irritated, which is receiving the taste sensation. You may have abnormal taste in your mouth. Or if that area of the, which we call them gestatory hallucinations due to temporal lobe epilepsy, if there is a recurrent tendency. For example, you develop, unfortunately, a tumor in temporal lobe. And that tumor irritates the, uh, what is this, gestatory area, gestatory cortex, taste receiving cortex. What will happen? You develop recurrent episodes of feeling taste, which is actually not there. And these psychomotor experiences are, because when temporal lobe problems are there, taste, or olfaction, they are usually associated with some other psychological disturbance as well. Because temporal lobe is also concerned with psychological functions. That is why taste epilepsy or epilepsy or seizures related with olfactions are usually considered psychomotor epilepsies, because with them there are some other associated psychological behavioral problems. Because temporal lobe is concerned with taste, so you may develop abnormal taste sensations as a seizure or as temporal lobe epilepsy. You may develop abnormal olfactions. I remember one patient who used to say that I'm just sitting, suddenly I feel there's a very good smell, but I'm not sure is it rose or it is what, but after that I lose the consciousness. And it happens many times in a month. Later on, he was diagnosed with temporal lobe epilepsy. What is happening to him? That actually electrical, abnormal electrical activity start in his temporal, temporal lobe. And when temporal lobe activity start, he feels some very good smell. Of course, no one in the world knows what he is feeling. But he knows the big problem is coming. Because after that, electrical discharge will spread all over his brain. And he will develop grand mal epilepsy. He will develop tonic clonic epilepsy. So this started as a partial and became generalized. So if someone develop, this is also called aura, this component, which is considered a part of seizure. Now, so temporal lobe epilepsy may be just taste sensation with some psychological disturbances or abnormal 
olfactory sensations or abnormal sensations of perceptions of self and the reality. For example, some people who develop temporal lobe epilepsy, they develop over familiarity. Sometimes it happens normally with you also. For example, you meet a person and you know that you have never met him, but you feel it looks familiar. Does it happen so occasionally? With boys, it happens very often. Is that true? And you want to talk and you want to take attention, but somehow your friend holds you, if there's a good friend. So what I'm saying, this condition may be due to epilepsy also. But if it occurs occasionally, it is physiological. But if you every day, TDS, you develop this feeling, right, that new people are very familiar to you, and everything which you see new, but you think it's not new, well, one of the cause may be temporal lobe epilepsy. Because it was a function of temporal lobe electrical activity to decide what is familiar and what is not. Then another function of the temporal lobe epilepsy, I told you first temporal lobe function was the difference between fantasy and reality. For example, if this lady, she is sitting here and she just, uh, it comes to in her mind that I'm made of metal and my movements are metallic movements. Of course, it will be reality or fantasy? fantasy. I hope it should be fantasy. Is that right? Or she thinks I'm made of cotton wool and moving like this. Again, this should be a fantasy. And there can be more bizarre and unrelevant fantasy also. But anyway, but they know that I'm made of the stuff which most of the human beings are. I'm not made of cotton. I'm not made of metallic things. Is that right? So if they think like that, this is only their fantasy. And they can differentiate between fantasy and reality if they are mentally healthy. But if she has temporal lobe epilepsy, and that part of the temporal lobe start firing, which is normally concerned to, with the control of giving the proper sense of reality that is disturbed, she may develop abnormal sense of reality about the self and about the environment. For example, her temporal lobe is firing, and suddenly when the temporal lobe starts firing abnormally, she suddenly feels all the uh, colleagues in the classroom, they are converted or uh, made of cotton balls. Do you think that's normal? And she cannot differentiate between fantasy and reality, right? So this may be what? Temporal, temporal lobe epilepsy. So temporal lobe epilepsy may be leading to feelings of, yeah, feelings of gastric hallucination, maybe feeling of? olfactory hallucinations may be leading to bizarre visceral sensations. Sometimes you develop something in your abdomen and you cannot, you don't know what it is exactly, but you feel pleasant or unpleasant depending upon who you are, or what area in the temporal lobe is irritated. Or temporal lobe epilepsy may come as over familiarity. Is that right? You go to a new town, but you feel you have been there. You go to a new shop, you feel you already know. You see a new person, you feel you already know. Right, it may be temporal lobe epilepsy, and this type of epilepsy in which you develop over familiarity, this condition is called deja vu. Deja vu, it's a French word. Deja vu. Or if you develop a sense of unreality about the self and the surrounding, as I told you, you imagine I'm made of cotton ball or are made of metallic objects. So you are feeling a abnormal sense of unreality. It's not a real thing. So that is called Jame Vu. Jame is Jame Vu. So this Deja Vu, if it is recurrently occurring, these two things sometimes happen physiologically when you're very much fatigued, right? Or you are under emotional stress, but they're transient. But you tend to develop these feelings again and again and inappropriately over familiarity and unreality or olfactory hallucinations or gastratory hallucinations. This is all temporal lobe epilepsy. This is a cases which we really miss. An unfortunate expression of temporal, uh, temporal lobe epilepsy. Yeah, that's abnormal sexual activity. I remember one nine year old boy, I was working in psychiatry ward and mother came to me and she was very much embarrassed and then she told me, doctor, there's something very seriously wrong with my son. And from last three years it is happening, it means boy had the trouble from six years up to the age of nine years. Nine year. I said, what is the problem? 
she said problem is very strange i have to have gone to many hukma i have gone to many type of treatment many doctors some people say brain surgery is there some people say there are jannat there some people say there is some badwa there right and uh, i said what's wrong she said i can't tell but you try to understand here something wrong anyway when i took her in confidence she said that uh, suddenly without any provocation when he was about 6 or 7 year old he started sexual movements he will hold any chair or anything and start moving his pelvis in a sexual fashion right and she she said that i know it that uh, this is not his age and she went to even endocrinologist who initially diagnosed precocious puberty and then they came to know there was no puberty nothing was there because there was no erection uh, testosterone level absolutely normal but he will have all the sexual movements for a while and then he will stop so mother was very upset what's going on one of the good doctor in our team he just gave the anti epileptic drugs and problem was solved within 2 weeks what was there he was having abnormal electrical focus near the amygdaloid body in the temporal lobe which controls your sexual behaviors and unfortunately when that area was intermittently abnormally firing he was developing psychomotor type of epilepsy is that right so there's so many different type of epilepsy unfortunately now you have to remember one thing from today onwards every seizure is not epilepsy and every epilepsy is not but then we'll have a break what is seizure seizure is when there is a normal electrical activity in the central nervous system clinically manifesting as a normal motor sensory or psychomotor experiences and if someone has a tendency to develop such seizures again and again then we say patient is suffering from epilepsy every person with seizure is not epilepsy now abnormal electrical activity may go to the motor experiences sensory or psychomotor example the motor experiences may be tonic clonic tonic clonic atonic or myoclonic and many others akinetic suddenly person stop his activity or abnormal sensory experiences may be somatic, somatic sensations abnormal or special sense like visual uh, or like visceral sensations psychomotor is usually involve gestatory olfactory deja vu jame vu abnormal sexual experiences another type of uh, epilepsy unfortunately sometimes many wives doubt their husbands have it a amygdaloid body become the center of epileptic form activity what will happen to the person yes dr tarik anyone if someone near the amygdaloid body there is the epileptic form focus and this focus fires three times in a day what will happen to person number 1 Yeah, anger, burst of anger, because the amygdaloid body is concerned with anger also, which is also important for species survival. When something goes against your wish, you should be angry. Is that right? And if you develop uh, epileptic focus in your anger area, right in temporal lobe nearby the amygdaloid body, you may develop the burst of anger. And this type of burst of anger, which are really a manifestation of epileptic seizure. can be controlled by anti epileptic drugs very recently there are some new theories coming i think i should share with you or not about the mood fluctuations you know already about the mood fluctuations or you want to know few words about this uh mood fluctuations you know some people have over fluctuations in the mood for very small thing they become very much disturbed and very small thing they become too happy normal person should have normal physiologically you should have day to day mood fluctuation little bit little happiness little sadness on small things is that right but some people they have abnormal mood fluctuation either with everything they become unduly very happy or with small disturbances they become unduly very sad some people abnormally fluctuate only on the sadness some people abnormally fluctuate on happiness and sadness both and we usually call these people very jazbati people very emotional people and it's better to be very careful with them they fluctuate too much isn't it Is that right? It's usually in the hostel, everyone knows them, except those persons themselves. So now they believe one of the latest theory is that the mood regulator centers, and some people develop little bit abnormal electrical activity. Due to that reason, what happens? Their mood fluctuates too much. That is why now in the group of mood stabilizing drug, we include membrane stabilizing drugs. 
which are used as anti-epileptic drug. For example, recently we have started using valproic acid as a mood stabilizer. Valproic acid as a, it, is, it was primarily anti-epileptic drug, but now they started using low doses anti-epileptic drug as mood stabilizer. Is that right? But don't tell anyone that fluctuation of mood is always epilepsy, it's not always epilepsy. Yet it is not classified like that, except severe anger burst, which are high with controlled with the moderate doses of anti-epileptic drugs, right? Now, so we, have, we were talking about these may be motor experiences, these may be sensory experiences, this may be psychomotor experiences. I just remember one more funny type of epilepsy in which person is suddenly standing and he starts staring in a particular direction. What is this? You must be thinking person is standing at bus stop. It is bursive epilepsy. Which area is abnormally firing? Frontal eye field. You know frontal eye field is a cortical area when you stimulate the left frontal eye field, eyes deviate to the right side. And when you stimulate right frontal eye field, you know things like this. When you irritate this frontal eye field, eyes will deviate to the left. If you can really st look straight, it means both frontal eye fields are working. So frontal eye fields are concerned with horizontal conjugate movement. And if my right frontal eye field over fires, both eyes will automatically swing to left side. Remember, frontal eye field are push buttons for the eyes. Both eyes are pushed to the opposite side. So it's very easy to understand that many people develop such type of epilepsy and then suddenly without any provocation their eyes swing to one side and it remains for a few minutes like that then they become okay. Maybe this was an epileptic form focus, right? So we have a break here. You already know it's very clear what is the difference in seizure and epilepsy. Epilepsy is intermittent, spontaneous, recurrent tendency to develop seizures again and again. And what are seizures? Seizures are abnormal. abnormal motor, sensory or psychomotor experiences due to abnormal electrical activity in the central nervous system.